How's it going? I'm Dan Madigan, sports editor at Daily Campus, here with Matt Pren, staff writer covering the women's basketball team. Coming at you from the Daily Campus newsroom, previewing number one UConn's matchup with number 10 Oregon, Monday at 7 p.m. on ESPN. It's the elite game in the Bridgeport Regional. Winner gets a trip to a Final Four. If the Huskies win, it's their 10th straight trip, so we'll get into it. Oregon, the Cinderella of the NCAA Women's Basketball Tournament, double-digit seed. Kren, what do we need to know about the Ducks? So Oregon's only the third ever uh, double-digit seed to make the Elite Eight, so that's a pretty amazing feat in that. They have three freshmen starting, Sabrina Ionescu, Ruthie Hedberg, and Mallory McGuire. Uh, Hedberg's are a leading scorer at 14.9 points per game, but Ionescu leads in assists and is second in points, so she's another player to watch. And she also has the most triple doubles this season in NCAA. But a big player to watch is Lexi Bando. She has 10 three-pointers in this tournament. And she's shooting 47.7% from the three-point line this year, which is third in the nation. Uh, two interesting figures about Oregon. They're tied with the tallest team in NCA, as they have six players over six foot four. And whenever they score 70 points per game, they're 21 and one. So good things for UConn, they average 87.7 points per game. But if Oregon's able to score more than 70, they show that they can win. Dan, you want to talk about Ionescu? Yeah, Ionescu is probably one of the most dynamic freshmen that the NCAA, the women's NCAA tournament scene, maybe since Brianna Stewart, uh, in all honesty. Like Kren said, she's pretty dynamic, pretty good scorer, excellent passer, pretty good rebounder. We saw that all on display against Maryland. Um, if UConn can shut her down, they'll have a really good chance at a, a pretty easy win over the Ducks. But, but Kren's right, Bando hit a, a bunch of big threes against Maryland. Uh, she really likes that corner spot. She hit a ton against the Terps. Um, UConn will have to kind of eliminate that drive and kick game that they had going so well, and if they can do that, it might be able to kind of kind of stifle the Oregon offense. And lastly, uh, between Hebbard and, and McGuire, there's some skill and some size down low. Um, I definitely think Natalie Butler, who didn't play at all uh, against in the Sweet 16 game, they'll probably she'll probably be making an appearance just because. More size, probably a slower game. Um, that's that's kind of an element where Butler excels at. So it'll be tough. Uh, won't be an easy game. It won't be. Uh, the Ducks are definitely better than a number ten seed, but it'll be interesting to see how UConn kind of adjust their game plan from the UCLA game uh, to go in, get to go in against the Oregon team. Yeah, like you're saying with the size, Natalie Butler is going to be a key figure. I think watch out for a big Nafisa Collier game once again. Brianna Jones of Maryland had 16 points and 15 rebounds, including seven on the offensive end. So if UConn can dominate the glass. I think it's going to be another UConn victory. Yeah, and it'll be interesting to see how Katie Lou Samuelson plays. Uh, she had a decent game stat-wise, 15 points, but she only had one in the in the second half. Uh, had a lot of turnovers, too. Didn't really look comfortable with the ball or really in any part of the offense in those last 20 minutes. Um, this team, this UConn team needs her. It's not like last year where they were able to coast by because they had so much, so many other more talented players. Um, Samuelson's going to need to continue to produce uh, probably a more balanced attack if the Huskies want to have a shot at a 10th straight Final Four. So that'll do it. Be sure to read the previews, recaps, and other coverage on dailycampus.com. I'm Dan Madigan. He's Matt Kren. See you guys later.